In this video, we're going to look at something that I think is really, really exciting. And that is the ability to go ahead and send out surveys from Dynamics 365 customer voice without needing to use Power Automate, but still be able to actually customize those surveys by using variables. So I've talked about variables a lot. I've done presentations on it and it's something that is extremely um, exciting in order to be able to actually customize your surveys. You can pass through data from records in Dynamics 365 or Dataverse, which was um, the common data service. With this, if you don't have Power Automate, you don't have a license for it, or you just don't know how to use it, or you don't want to, then this is the video for you. All right, so I'm not saying that Power Automate shouldn't be used. There's certainly a time and a place, but this is going to show us how we can do it without. So the very first thing that we need to do is on our survey, we'd go to customizations and then we'd click on personalization. Now this is where you can add, it says up to 15 variables, but actually the first name, even though there's a delete, um, we can't get rid of the first name or the last name. The locale variable, is something that uh, is also added automatically to a survey, but you can get rid of that. Locale would be, and I've done um, a video and a blog about this, that would be if you had a survey in multiple languages and you needed to pass through what language somebody should get for their specific survey. I'll just leave it in for now. Um, but you can see there that I've got three additional variables that I've added. To add them, you're just simply clicking on the um, plus button and then you're putting the name of what you want it to be. So if I said support um, number or whatever it might be, case number, I could go ahead and I can just type that in. Now notice if I put a space, it's basically going to give me a message. Standard characters are required. That means no spaces. Let's go ahead and get rid of those two. I'm just gonna go with the ones that I already have on there. And we'll go ahead and we will close this. Now what happens is after you've actually added in those variables, now we can insert them into the survey or into the email template as well. So I've got at the top a bit of a, a description and I've got hi, once a year we conduct a survey. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put hi, go to the variable and put their first name. Then I've got, considering your organization, please provide us with the answers to the following questions. So I'm going to say, considering your organization, and then I'm going to put that, which will then show the name of their organization. Then what we've got is, how would you rate your overall satisfaction with the plan you have with our company? And I'm going to put the name of the plan with the support tier so that would be gold silver bronze whatever it is that you categorize if that's what you wanted to put and then further down i've got what additional information or feedback would you like to share with us about your account manager and let's go ahead and put the account manager's name so those variables all i've done at the minute is i've just gone ahead and i've added them to the survey if i sent it like this and just shared a direct link to the survey it would show it exactly like this and it would have in the curly brackets account manager and that's obviously not what we want so what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to um, send this survey by importing in a list of records so if I go ahead and I click send and if this is the first time that you're sending it you will just see the options that are available um, I've sent it before so I have to click and say resend and we're going to go with email now, again, I could customize and I could put in variables. Um, so I could say, uh, thank you for being our valued customer. Um, what can I do? Uh, let's just put... Let's go ahead and then we can do personalize and we can put the name of the organization. All right, so I've then got some variables in there. I've put the variables into the survey. Great. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and click on import contacts and I've got two options. I've got some guidelines here. Oh, sorry, I've got two drop downs. Guidelines say what should actually be included in there. But then we've got these advanced options 
that say, oh, okay, well, you've also got the ability to put in advanced variables or those additional variables that we've added for organization, account manager name, and so on. So I can go ahead and click download advanced template. And what that's going to give me, if I just wait for that to open, is it's going to give me a blank um, template here and it's got email address, first name and last name. Those are the ones that are already there. It's then also got the three new ones that I added for organization, account manager and support tier. Then it's got the locale. And finally, it's got a regarding ID and a regarding entity name. Although, should that be entity name now that we're in Dataverse? I don't know. Anyway, what I can also do is if I put in the ID for this contact, meaning that contact is in Dynamics 365 or Dataverse, I can go ahead and I can put the ID and I can also put the regarding entity name, which would be contact or could also be um, the case or the incident. I can go ahead and put that in as well, which means when I actually send out this invitation, the invitation activity would be linked to the correct contact and it would also link the survey response when it comes back through. So what we would need to do is we'd need to then fill out that um, spreadsheet to where we can see what I've done is I've put in the ID and I've also put contact because I want to link this to the contact record. That's the name of the entity. I've also filled out all of the other information. If I had this survey in multiple languages, I could put which locale it should be for each person. So should they be getting it in French, German, Spanish, whatever it might be. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're not sure about how to get that ID, um, the easiest way is if you create a view or a search within um, the your model-driven app, whether that's Dynamics or, or one that you've customized, and I've created my search and I've got, let's say that I've got all the fields that I want, and I can go ahead and just click on export to Excel. If I then open up this file, what will happen is if I go ahead and just open that up. You'll notice that it starts at column D. That means there's three hidden ones. So column A is always going to contain the ID for the record. So keep that in mind. That's how you can get them quickly. And I could just go ahead and copy that column and then paste it into my other spreadsheet. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and import. So I'm gonna upload that document that I put together with everything in there. We can see there that it says it's okay, it's uploaded the file and it's giving us a preview. So we can see that the file contains nine variables and it's showing us a little bit um, in terms of we've got email, first name, last name that's actually listed. And finally at the bottom, we can see that we could tick a box to say, update the contact information if that recipient already exists as a contact in CDS. Um, so regardless, if these people are not in, it says CDS, that's really confusing, Dataverse. If these people are not in Dataverse, um, then it would create them as a contact record anyway. And then if you've got other details that you are updating, it can update those. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import that. We can now see that there are 100 recipients, and that is accurate. There are 100 people that were in that spreadsheet. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click send. Now, that's a lot of junk data that's in that. So we're going to basically end up with a ton of stuff failing. Um, but that is basically going to say, OK, I'm sending that out. And it should then take all of those variables and put them into the right places so that when the person receives the email, it will be customized. And when they click on the link, it will be customized on the survey. All right, so let's go into email. I've sent one to somebody that I can actually get access to. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Um, and we can see that it's customized and pulled in the first and last name variables. It's also pulled in the organization variable that I added to the um, email template. Then if I click on begin survey, we now are seeing the first name that I added at the top. We are seeing the name of the organization up here. We're then seeing the support tier variable that I added. And then down here, we're seeing the account manager and the name that I added as well. So 
This has given us the ability to go ahead and make a customized survey without needing to actually do anything with Power Automate, which again, for me is a pretty big deal because not everybody has it. So if I now go back in to um, my model driven app and let's go ahead and look at this person, we can see here that we've got um, the survey invite that was just sent. So I could go ahead and I could look at that. So there's all the details. It's linked it because I put in that regarding contact and the regarding ID. Now, if I go ahead and I just fill this out and say he's great and yeah, totally recommend. And we go ahead and submit that because the invitation was linked. Then that response that comes back in, if we go back, not sure how quickly that will come back through. See, there's the response. So it's immediately come back in and I can go ahead and I can look at the response now that's come back through. So those things are both linked. If we didn't put in the regarding ID and the name uh, of the entity or the table for contact, then those wouldn't be linked within your model driven app. Um, so it's up to you. It depends on um, if you want to have that linked or not. I hope this helps. Um, like I said, for me, I think this is a pretty big deal for those um, customers of Microsoft that do not either have a license for Power Automate or they don't know how to use it, um, but they still want to be able to link things and customize the surveys. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is cool? Is this something that you will now start using and customizing your surveys? Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.